That was a great show last week, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? Well, the Messac one. Yeah. It looked like yeah. you were laughing. You're right. Oh, it's so funny, you lot, to make me laugh. Where's Colin? <laughs> Colin, actually, he's meant to be here, isn't he? He's already 15 minutes late. Which is actually quite early for him. It's quite so good, good, actually, yeah, for Colin. <laughs> Hello. Colin, it's Mark. Where are you? No, I can't get into today, I'm afraid, mate. You're not in that pool again like the other week. No, I'm not in a swimming pool. I apologise for that. Don't let us down again, for God's sake. I know, I know, I let you down. No, no. You're not coming? No, I'm on a course. I'm on a course with ITC today. You're on a course? <clears throat> yeah. So I, I won't be able to get in. Sorry, you'll have to do it on your own. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Oh, I'll give up. See you soon. Thanks. Bye. Uh, more shot next? Yeah, sure, next. Is that, is that of course. Course. Well, yeah, Colin needs all the help he can get, doesn't he? <laughs> very true. <laughs> very true. En en engineering course. Maybe. And, and some other course. courses. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> should we get on with the show? <laughs> So welcome to Swarf and Chips. This is what's coming up in this week's show and we're going to kick start with 10 videos in 10 minutes. So McGreevy Engineering, they've just bought their first five axis vertical machining centre heading toward the aerospace. Oh! I don't know. Anyway, McGreevy Engineering, they've just bought their first five axis vertical machining centre. Why have they chosen a Victor? This company, when I was there, the day after this, they were, get, they were hoping to get their AS9100 certification for aerospace machining. And this machine has been purchased really to, to get them into that marketplace. Uh, they're a successful business. They've got a lot of machine tools. Uh, this Victor AX800 uh, is, a, is a big five axis machine. They liked it because of the working envelope. It's got 1600 millimeters in the X axis and 700 in the Y, but it's got an 800 millimeter integrated C axis table there. So much flexibility. Uh, this enables them, especially with that tipping head. And we got the machine moving around quite nicely behind just mm. to demonstrate the sort of versatility and how the... That's how, a big how the envelope. It, it, it is big. And there are a few other machines in the market that, that offer a similar, similar style of uh, machine type. But they, these guys also like the fact that it was very competitively priced. And it's fast as well. It's got a 15,000 RPM spindle. It came with through spindle coolant. Mm. They opted for the FANUC control, but there are choices on, on the control systems as well. But I think, as um, as you see, if you watch this video, they've also got other Victor machines. And is that they had the lathes, didn't they before? Or yeah, they still have. They, they, they've still got a, a V Turn Forty, which is cut in stainless steel. We actually caught that in action while while we were there. And I think the stability of that machine and the rigidity of that machine mm. was was you know wasn't the only reason they bought this five axis, but it really helped them in making that decision. Yeah, I've got to actually add because there's a bit in the video too where he says he sent a part off to a customer and the customer needs to normally put like a, a, a finish on the part or something. They were, yeah, they were supposed to be polishing it. It was <laughs> a, Normally they had to polish it, but they didn't have to because of the surface finish that the machine Customer's gave. happy, Impressive. he's happy. Yeah, yeah. And I got a trip to Ireland out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next video, I am Kurt. They're talking about their Boss 80 bar feeder classed as their fa flagship model. Why has it been so successful? Well, these guys have been uh, making bar feeds since 1961 and they're very well made. They're very rigid. Um, this particular uh, machine goes up to 52 diameter or 52 millimeter diameters isn't it? it's, it's a really solid product for them it was an interesting interview I, we, we, I went, went to Italy with uh, Colin we spent two days at this open house there are thousands of visitors which was incredible for bar feeds I'm not saying bar feeds aren't important they are but often you associate you know machine tools with getting mm. thousands and thousands of visitors but these guys were, were, were it was a very popular show I challenged Clive on about the rigidity why do you need it well you imagine if you've got a bar spinning around uh, you know 6,000 yeah. rpm that's three meters in length you don't want the bar feed shaking to bits uh, and then he was also uh, very it, the HD range is a, is a yeah it's a very productive bar feed for fixed head and sliding head machines 
But we also wanted to tap into the fact that it was a three metre bar mm. because a lot of engineers buy mm. one metre bar feeds or short bar magazines. Why should they go for the big bar magazines or the longer ones? And, and really his answer is, well, you don't have to chop bars. You get less remnant. You can load more bars so the bar feed can run for longer. So why wouldn't you opt for a, for a longer bar feed? Mm. And you're right, Mark, this is their most popular seller, the HD model. It's the most rigid uh, one with bar feed within their range, and it can go on either fixed or sliding head lathes. Perfect. And uh, it's, uh, sorry, great for lights out machining, isn't it? That's what bar feeds are all about. And th these are actually sold uh, through First MTA in the UK. There's, there's about eight videos we did over there on bar feeds and uh, automation systems for um, machine tools. It's very, very interesting, very interesting. Okay. <laughs> well, Collins weren't, but mine were. <laughs> Okay, CDK Engineering, they are working to really, really high tolerances. What is it that Mitutoyo are doing for them to help? Well, I was fortunate to uh, visit uh, these guys. Now, th these guys are making hydraulic seals. So a lot of these seals are actually going into companies that are making, for instance, yoghurt. So therefore, they're having contact with the end product. So they have to be machined, they have to be measured, and the, the tolerance is, uh, you know, 0.03 of a millimetre. It's got to be pretty pretty precise. Now, what these guys have actually done is they, they've, they've taken a, another step forward uh, they, with Mitutoyo and their ideas, because they had a um, height gauge, you know, to, to look at the processes, and then they went through into a CMM. Um, and what the CMM has actually done is one of their customers uh, has given them uh, an end product to actually manufacture, which has then led into buying the Doosan machine. So it's a it's a great process, and you know all these guys have been taken to Mitutoyo. They've been trained, all the apprentices, and it's ma amazing backup from Mitutoyo. Really su great success story for mm. them. It's back to basics in some ways as well. This video because it talks about things like digital height gauges, very very sim almost simplistic tools for measuring. But I think what was interesting was the bit that. that the, the route that this business has gone through from having a Bridgeport milling machine, uh, you know, a turret turret mill going back yep. seven or eight years ago, to now having fully blown CNC Y-axis CNC turning centre and actually making uh, metallic seals as opposed to just plastic and, and PTFE ones and grown their business as a result of being able to offer more to their customers. They've just got a new contract, didn't they? From a, Yes. Uh, was it from a, it was uh, an existing client? An existing client, but it was, um, yeah. And there's also, they also talk about surface roughness testing as well, which Mitutoyo supplies. So should we do work. videos or should we do 10 minutes next time? <laughs> 10 minutes per video? I don't, I'm deaf to that. <laughs> I think you are, aren't you? But I think but sometimes there's so much, you, you want to get the no, stuff out. I I understand, I understand. I know you get the this thing. So Dika Precision, I'm going to have to read this because they are creating a part in one op. So fully deburring, minimal handling, quality continuity and 50% cycle time reduction. How are Biglia achieving this? I don't know where you, where you kind of start with this, this story really because they do all have uh, multi-axis lathes and turning centres already. But this now has two Y-axis. Uh, it's got 24 tools on it, all driven tools, C-axis capability. But the, some of the points that you've made, the reasons that they cut their cycle mm. times is because they've been able to machine slots faster using the Y-axis, also more accurately. So there's less operator handling on the machine. It's much, it's much faster. They've obviously got the bar feed on the machine to automate the process so they can run lights out. But they bought the Belia because of the, the, the stability, the rigidity, and the performance, but also importantly, the turnkey project that White House Machine Tools put together for that part that you can see there. And that's the yeah. one you're talking well, about where tricky. he cut yeah. the cycle time by about 50%. And that slot yeah. as a result of the Y-axis, instead of just using the C-axis in the driven tools, the Y-axis gave them a more precise uh, slot. That's a saving. And you wonder why engineers don't actually look at this a lot more. Do you go for the one-op? You, know, yeah, you can well, save a lot more time and cost. And you? he didn't buy this. He bought this machine because his older machine was actually wearing out. So he probably wouldn't have looked if his older machine was still was still running and he'd still mm. probably have been doing the, the part much slower with yeah. more operators. Well, with ops and different, yeah. Yeah, if his One other op. machine hadn't broken down. But it's really opened his eyes into what he can achieve. Mm. It makes his life easier. It means he can go home and leave the machine running. You know, this automation thing is something that you, the UK has to embrace if it wants to become more, yeah, more definitive. And he's done it. Mm. Automation is the key. Mm. 
So next video, the Trump Trumatic, they've just installed a machine. Now this is interesting because they've said it's competitive in the market below their existing machining capabilities. In my mind, I'm thinking, so where's the compromise? What is it that they're doing? What is the USP and who's, thi who's this aimed at? This is a combination machine. It's a laser and punch machine. And Trump used to sell uh, a la or do sell laser punch machines that are bigger than this, uh, but they they are a lot more money. And what tends to happen is a, an end user or a, a machining co or a subcontract company looks at it and goes, actually, that's a lot of money to buy a combination machine. Mm -hmm. I'll just buy the two machines and do the two operations separately. So they kind of value engineered this product in order to be able to then go to that same type of. Uh, customer and go actually now you can have a combination machine for less money because it's slightly smaller and like I say they've value engineered and made, uh, and made some changes to the machine in order to achieve how, that. How are they physically putting those two separate machines in one? So as, as you watch this video go through you'll see when we go to Eiselbest Isle, Isle, um, we first speak to John here about the machine at Trump then we go to the, the customer that's bought the first one in the UK and I wasn't quite sure, but mm. when you see the action of the machine, the doors go up and, and it's mm. fully, uh, fully enclosed and the laser operation, the laser cutting happens. Uh, which, and, and then the laser drop, the, the guarding drops down and then the punching operation happens. Mm. So it's quite a novel idea. It's a very unique machine, really, really liked it, but until you see it, it's hard to grasp. And, and something on this video is that the head isn't fixed like other machines that I've seen. It actually moves to, to the actual sheet or what it's cutting, which is sheet metal. So it's it's fantastic. We, yeah, which is correct. Which basically means that you get a you get a bigger working envelope in a smaller footprint, which is often what we talk about with other machine tools. But it's the case for this as well. And it punches six point four millimeters thick and does three. It's got a three kilowatt fiber laser. So go through your wallet then. No, it wouldn't get through that because you're not seeing what's in there. <laughs> well, you probably have. You probably pinched it out. Thanks. <laughs> So next up is the AMAC, it's a training facility centre for apprentices but what's quite interesting is it's to upskill workforces, so what are they doing here? Well Joe went to, to uh, interview these guys uh, and it stands for the Advanced Manufacturing and Automation Centre up in Burnley. So really what these guys are doing is try to educate and uh, bring apprenticeships in so they can get them straight onto the machine tools that they'll be using in the company they're first employed with. And, and that's the key point here. And Houghton are a big partner of them because with lubricants, the, uh, lubricants have to be checked because the environmental side uh, of what they're based around. So it's a great partnership they've got down there and Houghton really, really respond very well in reference to being a partner down there. It's funded by the Local Enterprise Partnership and Training 2000. One of the points I picked out about this, I know it is primarily uh, for Houghton this video to promote their relationship, but it, it's the, the detail and the depth that they go in, Houghton go into in, our, in, in looking after people that are investing in their, in their coolant solutions. It's like for example, for me, when I used to be on a machine tool, at the end, a coolant was a coolant, mm. you know, but it mm. isn't like that these days. You know, different materials require different yeah. coolants. There's health and safety issues surrounding. The, mm. the longevity of a, of a machine tool life is often down to um, coolants or can be improved by the types of coolants and fluids that you use. And I think the Houghton point here is that what they do is they walk their customers through this journey where they, they get yeah. the best, you know, they can get the best of those elements that I just mentioned. And continue <laughs> testing the lubricant. And that, that's the key. I think that is the point. And I know the buzz has gone, but for me, like I say, a coolant <laughs> just used to be a coolant used to yeah. fill the machine it's up, but it's now. different now. Mm. Not anymore. It's, it needs management. It, need, it, need, it needs a relationship, and that's what Houghton's are, are talking about here. Yeah. Autodesk, they have a new product called Feature Count. What is it? Well, more to the point, um, what, what Joe's uh, interviewed in the, the guy from uh, Autodesk here is, is talking about their improvements to it and, and the additions into the software. So you can do a lot more, it's easier, it's more flexible to actually use to a certain extent. And it, it, it's, it's all about giving the customer a better experience. And I think that's what the, the new additions to Feature Cam 2018 is about. It's got a new ribbon, as you'll see across the top there, uh, rather than a static toolbar, which is more, more dynamic. But what is very interesting is that they've, they've used their own analytics to analyse what their users are doing on the software in yeah. order to make the improvements. So they're using yeah. feedback from 
from, from what's being generated by their customers mm -hmm. in order to make the improvements. That's on the feature cam uh, 2018, but also uh, there's some other developments in the software like parallel finishing, uh, automatic auto, uh, orientation, which helps to verify programs uh, when, when they're running. Also more simula simulation to help users balance machine on Swiss type lathes as well. So there's lots of additions to the software. Uh, and there's also some additions to the part maker 2018 software as well, which I mentioned in this video if you want to uh, look at it. But it is about making it, making it easy uh, yeah. for engineers to engage with and, and um, intuitive is a word. Yeah. Well, next up, we're going to head over to ETG because, Paul, you went over there, didn't you, to see their new showroom. MTD CNC have an exclusive for you today. We're the first to visit the Engineering Technology Group's new showroom, which has just opened here at the headquarters in Wellsbourne. A year ago, this business moved the whole of its operation from Southam to here in Wellsbourne. Sales, service, spare parts, operations. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what is here and why you should get yourself to this new showroom. We've got a Hardinge Bridgeport Conquest V480 3-axis machining centre with a Siemens control. We've then got Nakamura Technology in their very popular AS200 long bed version of their Y-axis turning centre. We've got five axis machines here from Quasar. This is driven by Siemens Control, a very high specification machine. We then move on to multitasking machines with a Nakamura NTRX uh, 300 for manufacturers that, that are looking at reducing setups and cycle times and one hit machining. Quasar we mentioned already, but there's another one behind me, a BT50. We've also then got a Hardinge Bridgeport, the XR1000 machining center. This is a three axis machine with a Hayden Hain control. Now what we can't forget is that the engineering technology group don't just supply these machines. They also supply Chiron, they also supply Hampman, uh, various other brands as, as, as well as Starmer and automation solutions. But you really need to get yourself here to see this place. You need to see the latest in machine tool technology in action. You should come here to their new showroom in Wellsbourne and you can find out exactly where they're positioned if you visit their website, engtechgroup.com. Wow, what an impressive facility. And also, your knowledge is really impressive here, Paul. You know every single machine in that machine shop. Took a lot of learning. That took us half a day to produce that. <laughs> I bet you were there with, for a week, actually, yeah, those we machines. Were. But it is impressive. <laughs> we're going back next week to talk to Graham Thomas, who's uh, one of the directors at the company, a little bit more about the operations behind the uh, the new showroom as well and just how how uh, how this business is growing. And Very it's dynamic, growing aren't they? Very dynamic company. Yeah. Talking about dynamic, you've just bought something very exciting, haven't you? How do you know that? <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, okay. Can we show everyone? <laughs> I'm, uh, does it matter if I say no? <laughs> no, we're going to show everyone. And also after, we're going to see Joe at Goering. Now, John, you know I'm into my motorbikes, I used to race 600s, but I quite fancy this bike. How much is it? Well, obviously, um, I know you love your bikes, and sometimes you manage to stay on them, which is always a bonus, obviously. Um, this bike, to you today, we're doing a special offer at the show. Okay, We'll deliver it after the show to your home. Uh, it's all ready to go. It's race prepped. Uh, we've got a spare set of tyres, paddocks down the lot for 24 grand. And can I pay on a monthly basis, I John? Think we can offer you flexible finance deals on this, and we again, like with the Tigo, I'll do it for £27 a day. Uh, and when do you actually need the cash by? Um, we'd like, obviously, a down payment uh, by the end of the week. How about if I gave you a down payment now? How would that? What, if you give me cash, give me 20 quid cash now, I'll seal the deal and uh, the bike's yours, all right? Okay. Thanks very much. Well done, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Mike, I've been to this wonderful facility two or three times now, but it's all kind of it's all about today, isn't it? This is the official opening. Absolutely, it's come together today. Now, you know, we've, uh, we've moved here, relocated over Easter, and now this is the icing on the cake. Really, get all the customers, all the partners, all the suppliers to be part of this big event. And today's the day. How many people can we expect? In excess of 200. You know, we thought maybe 180, 200. 
but yes, it's exceeded our expectations, so we're really pleased. How have Lloyds Bank helped Goering along their journey? So Goering's journey um, here, we've, we've, they've been clients of ours for uh, about 25 years now, since the early 1990s, and uh, I'm delighted that we've been able to help them both financially, uh, in terms of actually helping them um, relocate into these fantastic premises, uh, but also with their investment into plant and machinery to help drive productivity. James, we're here at this wonderful Goering Open event here in Aston, in Birmingham. I know they're an MTA member, aren't they, so it's great news. It's fantastic news. Um, what more could we want than uh, members showing how important investment is, not just in equipment to improve productivity because you can see all the automation in action here, but also their massive commitment to apprentices. If you walk around here, you see people who are engaged, they want to be here, and that is why this. I'm very confident that uh, Goring will continue to grow in this area and be even more important. Thanks Joe. Now before we go to review the news, I was at Subcon a couple of weeks ago and we met some fans of Swarf and Chips, so we've got some comments. So we're here at the Advanced Manufacturing Show, but Gary, we've just had a meet. You're a fan of Swarf and Chips. I love Biggest it. Fan. Big fan. Big T fan. Tell me why. Uh, it's just every time it comes up, it comes up on our email. I always have to log on to, and see it and see it. It's just entertaining beyond the beyond anything uh, so, so it's great and all you guys really do gel uh, and yeah and I've obviously passed it on to friends etc uh, please log on to your site because it is really really good and it's informative as well but fun most of all fun with it as oh, well Gary so, thank yeah. you thank you so You're much welcome <laughs> great thanks very much cheers guys thank you so I'm at the Subcon show at the moment and I've just met this gentleman called Andrew and he says he watches Swarf and Chips. So what do you think of the show, Andrew? Absolutely brilliant. I like it. It's so informative. There's so much information gained from it. And especially if you're looking to buy new tools or there's a new product online, it's very, very good. Thoroughly enjoy it. Brilliant. Thank you for no watching. Problem. Thank you. <laughs> So, the latest news stories, T.W. Ward. Well, this is a fantastic user story here, uh, Cosmopolitan Engineering based in Sheffield, where T.W. Ward are based. They've actually sold them three Hyundai Weir machines and one Hartford. And these guys are machining really complex, hard material, so they need powerful machines. And that's what this user story is about. It's fantastic. The, the actual company themselves, um, they have a lot of non-disclosure agreements, which means a lot of the parts they make you can't actually see and they couldn't take photographs of and what have you. Yeah. But they wanted to produce the story because it is a story about machining hard materials mm. uh, successfully as a result of the power of machines. You know, you're talking about high and weir machines with gearbox heads, you know, high, high kilowatts when it comes to the power of the machine, and then the machining centre, which is a Hartford, I'm sure that's probably a BT50 yeah. with box guideway mm. construction. So I think the message really on, on this story is that a company's bought four machines from one supplier uh, to machine hard materials effectively. It's a shame in a sense that they can't showcase that, but then mm. there's a reason why. Yeah. Right, um, Seiko Tools? Yeah, this is an interesting story. They're, all, they're always innovating uh, Seiko tools. New, new, a new tool to the market, which is a new face milling cutter, which essentially doubles tool life, or that's what they're looking to do. It's the R220 ATA. It's got eight cutting edges, uh, and with optimised geometries on this, which helps reduce cutting forces, which basically increases the tool life. So the types of materials that you're looking at using these for, are like your cast irons, uh, your steel, so they're, they're far faster, they're more economical, and I think that's the point with having those eight cutting edges. Mm. Uh, when it comes to what sizes they come, and the cutter body sizes are up to 160 millimetres, uh, and you either have 12 or 16 inserts. Very innovating company, Seiko, aren't they? It, it does amaze me with cutting tools that when, you know, even, even if you can make a, a, the minutest of saving or improvement in cutting tools, that's what they do just to, just to keep just moving to, things forward. Yeah, technology, um, isn't it? Yes. Right, DIMPF 2017. I've been fortunate enough to go to a DIMPF show about 10 years ago, and they really are something else. It's unbelievably impressive. This time there was over 5,700 dealers there and they had over 800 international visitors. Important to stress, Mill CNC are the supplier in the UK for the Doosan range. But they hold this show, I believe it's biannually, in Korea. And if you want to see the latest Doosan developments, this is where you go to see it. Uh, some of the new machines on show were the DV... F5000 and 8005 axis machines, which have uh, pallet changes for automation and up to 800 millimeter uh, 
uh, were, were rotary tables. Uh, other machines that were on show as well, they had the new high torque horizontal machining centers, which is the NHP 4000 and NHP 5000 machines. And not forgetting kind of their, probably their, some of their most popular sellers, their Lynx and their Pumas, they're also expanding mm. those ranges as well. Mm. And to include uh, a twin spindle turning center with a gantry into the range as well. And, and adding to that, showing 80 machines and 26 new machines yeah. out of that. Yeah. It's massive, really. I think what's good about Mill CNC as well is they all go over. The, the sales team tends to go over so they can familiarise themselves with a new product yes. so they can come back it's and important. obviously t talk to their audience about what they've seen. So there's going to be lots of things on the horizon. Mills have got their own open house coming up later this year, which I believe is in October, which yeah. we'll be at. And you, you may even see some of these new models there too. So when you was at Mills, is that why you went over to the show then? We, I went to DIMPF, yeah. I yeah. went over to DIMPF. And, and we used to take customers as well over to Korea mm. to see the machines because mm. the developments happen so fast. Yeah, it's good. Last three news stories. Hexagon, they're offering demonstrations. Yeah, Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence. What, what, what they've got here is they're very much offering a demo of their versatile automated white light sensor. So you can actually measure very small components or up to panels of a car or a van. And, and that's what it's about. There's a, there also, there's a video on uh, MTD that we took. Uh, it's, a, it's a marvellous product, but also they're offering that demo. Bring it to us. We'll show you how powerful it is. It's kind of a, I think they summarise it very well in this article, actually. It's, a, it's an online, offline kind of measurement solution, yeah. this is. And the, it, the way it works is it takes a load of images of, of, of the part and then turns that into a, a point cloud. And essentially, then if there's a, there's a, there's a problem or you need to remachine it you can actually do that in process as well can't you uh, and i think like mark said whether you're looking at small components or even parts up to the size of cars this is where this uh, measurement solution comes in i think the other point that i picked up on this as well is, is the environment it doesn't matter about yeah. the environment yeah. that it's in so you can you know there could be vibrations it could be vari variances in the lighting or the temperatures and this would still be efficient and effective the words i was looking for is in line uh, and offline applications uh, and real time is yeah. what this is about for measurement. Quick grind, they have expands for growth. Well, before we answer that, we, we have to welcome Quick Grind to the MTD CNC platform. They're a brand new customer. Uh, we're looking forward to working with you. But the, these guys uh, are, I've, I've got a fantastic facility and we're looking forward to filming what they do down there to a certain extent. But the, this feature is about their Mirage uh, series of solid carbide M mills, which outperform many competitors. Yeah, they, I mean, they're, cla they're claiming they outperform the competitors when you're looking to machine materials such as stainless, uh, super alloys and non-ferrous. And I think what I picked up from this press release as well is that the new geometry that these, um, that's on these cutting tools allows for roughing, finishing, uh, spotting and profiling all as one operation. Now, often what you have to do is use different tools for those types of operation, different cutting tools. But this particular Mirage tool can actually cater for the lot. Mm. So you can imagine how much more efficient that can make you. Uh, how much less expensive it is than buying lots of tools. And what we can't forget about Quick Grind is their actual <clears throat> regrinding service that they offer, mm. uh, taking not not well taking older tools and actually not just refurbishing them but making them new mm. again. So okay. big big thing in the market regrinding. Mm. Really well, is. maybe we can get them in on a swarf and chips. They are due to come in. Ah, yeah. Brilliant. Wow. Uh, where's Colin? Well, because he didn't make it here today, we're going to have to cut to something that he's previously shot. Thanks for that, guys. Now, we were recently at the IM Club Open House in Faenza, Italy, and we saw the whole suite of machines. It's really, really impressive. Also, almost as impressive, DKW Precision Engineering in Portsmouth. Carl, thank you for having us along. No problem, Colin. It's been a pleasure. And now the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Now, you've got a suite of IM Club machines here. So we've got four IM Club bar feeds across our fixed head turning section. Um, what we like about these bar feeds is they're all magazine fed. So for lights out running, we have multi-loading bars. Um, we overspec, we tend to overspec to future proof, so the bar feed you see behind us is an 80 mil capacity bar feed. You say 80 mil though, but it holds from 8 to 80 mil, is that right? That's right. We wouldn't go down to 8 on this particular machine, but the flexibility is there. Because it's really flexible, because you don't normally get that element of flexibility in terms of the diameter of the bar. No, but very, very few bar feeders operate in the same range. Okay, and this, how long is this? So this will feed three meter bars. Okay, so it works with standard bar essentially. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've got three meter bar feeds across the factory. Um, yeah, we're a little bit tight on room now because of that, but it allows us to run 
most efficiently. Okay, so yeah, it ties in with your ethos of running 24-7 and really, really efficient. Now, in terms of the running a machine, reliability and how rigid it is. So it's, it's a beam construction, so it's, it's rigid. We don't have any issues with the, with the bath knees, to be honest. Um, all of our operators and programmers are very familiar with them, where we've got them across four machines. So very simple to use and operate. Can't really tell you about the support because nothing's gone wrong with them. Well, that's a great insight into IMCA. Um, just a very brief summary of the machines. So back to the studio. Thank you. Thanks for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Next week, we've got a takeover show with Tebis. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. <laughs>